Hello, welcome again in Milano. I hope you will enjoy to see a city and this experience that is uh, really interesting, I think. And uh, today I'm talking to you about the, an history, a long history that lasts for instance uh, about uh, 100 years, about the history of arthroscopy. It, it was in uh, 1912 and was a uh, Titanic uh, disaster, and somebody started to talk about arthroscopy. It was uh, Severin Nordunov that uh, talked about uh, in front of 1,000 or 200 surgeons from all around Europe, talking about not knee surgery, of course, but about something that is different. But first, for, for the first time, we heard about arthroscopy. But it was uh, the definition of arthroscopy came from uh, Severin Nordunov, that uh, is famous for uh, a pacifism. Uh, uh, book written uh, uh, by him, but the uh, electropedic field is, is famous for arthroscopy, the definition of endoscopy of closed cavities by the means of my trocar endoscope. For, for the first time, arthroscopy is defined by this man. We go back, we go on, and after six years, there is a Takashi that is quite famous for, uh, in the history of uh, arthroscopy, and the Japanese school is famous in uh, the history of arthroscopy, knowing the decades coming after this. Uh, coming from Tokyo, that made the first arthroscopic attempt in a partial patient with TBC uh, using a scope of 7.3 mm for the other, so we are talking about something big. And uh, we are talking about the end of the first world war. Many, some years later, uh, there is a report published on Lancet about uh, arthroscopy. And, uh, the first German arthroscopy monograph is uh, written in uh, 1938. The first idea in USA, so till now we have not, nothing about USA. So something started in Europe and started in Japan, but USA came later, and of course we grow up a lot later. The first American surgeon interested in arthroscopy is uh, Philip Crusher from Chicago. That, uh, published a paper on a similar cartilage disease before, uh, in 1925, on the diagnosis of a lesion, in skull lesion. And he treated uh, with surgery, it was famous because he treated the basket player with the shoulder surgery, and the Porsche made his, his, its first main model. Michael Barman, in 1931, worked in a hospital for joint disease in New York. He made many specimen studies using a 3 millimeter scope describing the arthroscopy articular knee anatomy in order to dress in German, to talk about it more, and uh, made some, uh, the first printing of the design of the meniscal in uh, the arthroscopic view. Tagachi, in 1932, built the first number one arthroscope uh, 3.5 millimeters and uh, showed shared the clinical results in the Japanese community at the 64 Japanese orthopedic meeting and Bugatti built the, the T31 Royale first model. But uh, we go to the one uh, that is considered the first arthroscopic uh, surgeon uh, in the world, that is uh, Watanabe, that uh, is famous because he uh, introduced the light, sco light and shine scope and uh, he could share his uh, images with others. So he met uh, uh, Berman in New York, visited the Mayo Clinic, Toyota from Japan produced the first light laser, and Watanabe described that started to publish about that, and uh, about the loose body, about the, and performed 800 arthroscopic needle biopsy, uh, and published the first results of uh, 155 knee scopes and Toyota goes on with sportive cars in the years. But the change for the camp was derived in the North, uh, North America was the um, Watanabe meet Robert Jackson from Toronto. Uh, and Jackson visited Watanabe in uh, Japan. And uh, a few months later came back to Canada with the arthroscope. <laughs> so bringing the technology to Toronto. But of course, we are not talking about what we use today. It was different kinds of arthroscope. There was uh, something uh, very uh, weak uh, with the uh, glasses that broken inside the joints. So many problems. And only the surgeon could, could see inside the joint. We do not think about the big screen that we have in our theater today. 
It was Piero Dispta, uh, one of my senior teacher and uh, mentors, that is uh, Branca, that was president of the uh, Italian Society of Arthroscopy, uh, told me personally that uh, at the beginning, arthroscopic surgery was seen as something that looked from uh, 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 the, the hole of the door. <laughs> and it is uh, quite funny because uh, now, some surgery that we perform and is automatic to think about arthroscopy. 30, 40 years ago, it was uh, just a game for somebody. So Jackson, come back from uh, the serious part, uh, came back from uh, Japan and uh, uh, started with, uh, for, for the first time, there was uh, the light and the possibility to share with others. And this was a really change because in 68, many changes, that, uh, there, there was of course the 68, 68 movement and uh, there were a lot of um, congress from there that started because people could show what they see inside the joint. So there was uh, the possibility to teach arthroscopy for the first time, not on the book, but live. There is the started to publish works like uh, Ikeushi performed the first uh, when Ikeushi performed the first discoid lateral meniscal meniscectomy, and that started with the American Corps. So America can the leader in uh, uh, the development of technology and uh, techniques in uh, uh, arthroscopy. In the 70s. Uh, there is a spreading of uh, technology, the spreading of this technique, uh, the foundation of the society, International Arthroscopy Society, Association of Societies. And in Europe, what happens? In, in 1992, there was uh, Werner Muller, Lorne and Tricky, Einar Eriksson, and Peter Ertel, foundation of ESCA. That was not SSSK, but there was only one S because uh, and, uh, it became ESCA, as we know, with sport trauma in 92, uh, so after 10 years. But the life is now, now actually arthroscopy is a very, uh, there are many instructional courses like this, uh, is a consolidated, consolidated reality in many joints, different joints, but the future is around. So who will be the next in this history? I hope one of you will be the next. Uh, just uh, uh, some uh, uh, tools that uh, I will describe about the modern uh, arthroscopy. Uh, the tower is a uh, structure uh, with a video screen. There is a, a camera system, uh, image management system, that is the computer of the arthroscope, the shaver console, and the, uh, the light, that is a LED actually in light, before many years ago was the LED light. Then there is the fluid management with the pump, and the radio frequency ablation system if you use it. In a, a standard table that is a picture of my hospital, I hope we have everything in my hospital. <laughs> Maybe something is miss, missing, but uh, it's uh, our standard because I take just yesterday the nurses, I make the picture of our table, so it's the reality of our hospital. <laughs> and uh, we have a spinal needle, a knife, uh, trackers. We use two trackers because uh, we make uh, accessory access uh, in the middle uh, under the patella for fluid circulation. A probe and uh, a meniscus sponge, the cap, okay, uh, the pincette, the needle holder, scissors, uh, arthroscopic scissors are, uh, are not here, but some, uh, some uh, surgeons use it, so maybe you don't have it. A basket and uh, duck pin that have to be uh, right, left, and up, uh, also, also straight. So, this is, I think, a standard arthroscopic table in uh, my practice. And uh, of course, there is the arthroscope, the light source, optics, outflow and inflow, and the uh, shaver. But with this, I think that you could uh, perform quite simply an arthroscopy. So, of course, the story goes on. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I hope I wish you the best in your career.